today's lecture, we're going to talk about two things. Um, one is just uh, um, something called chromosomes, which are DNA, and the second is the cell cycle, which is basically the life of the cell. And the reason why we're talking about chromosomes uh, with the cell cycle is the cell cycle kind of focuses on how your cell divides up your chromosomes, um, specifically for the purpose of making new cells. So let's start with chromosomes and what they are, and we'll just start off with a general definition. Um, so uh, chromosomes are made of something called DNA, which you're probably pretty familiar with. DNA is a macromolecule that stores your genetic information. Um, you can think of it this way. DNA is what stores the information on how to build and operate a living cell. So it's kind of like the instruction manual for you um, or for your cells. It's like a recipe book um, that describes how to make, um, make all the proteins that kind of like your cell needs. Um, and you've seen DNA, you've seen pictures of DNA before, maybe on Jimmy Neutron, this twisted structure. This is um, um, just a single molecule of DNA here. Um, it's made of many actually um, smaller molecules. That's why we call it a macromolecule. It's made of different sugars and acids and things of sorts um, that come together to form this twisted um, shape. Um, so, and every, every cell in an organism um, contains a full set of DNA. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Every cell in your body contains all the DNA um, for every cell in your body. So the DNA inside your eye cell is the same as the DNA inside your foot cell. It's just different parts of that DNA are being read and understood by your cells. Um, so this is kind of why a, a, a forensic scientist can take um, DNA from like anything, a hair, um, and match it to you. And so you can he see here, this is what we're going to talk about next. Um, what are your chromosomes? So your DNA here, here's that twisted double helix, um, gets packaged into these chromosomes, which then sit inside your cells. And you can see here, this cell has multiple uh, chromosomes because it contains a full set, it contains um, every piece of DNA that uh, any cell in your body would possibly need. So... Um, what we end up finding happening is that if you can imagine um, how complex you are as an organism, you have lots of different parts, your body makes lots of different proteins and other molecules, that's a lot of instructions. So your DNA molecules are very large. If you were to actually take a, a single strand of your DNA and kind of stretch it out if you could um, possibly do that, um, it, it's about four feet long. And you have to imagine that these have to um, fit inside these tiny, tiny little cells of your body. So what happens is to save space, your DNA is packaged in a structure called a chromosome. What happens is DNA is already twisted. And when you keep twisting something over and over again, um, it causes the twist to twist on themselves. We call that becoming supercoiled. And after a while, this DNA kind of supercoils itself and gets condensed down to kind of save space. Um, you can see it here. Um, this DNA is twisted, and it's twisted so much that the twists kind of twist on themselves and become retwisted. And that makes up um, this kind of ball of DNA that we call a chromosome. So it's this really condensed down, um, twisted, tangled up mess of DNA. We call those your chromosomes. They're basically just condensed down DNA. Uh, you can think of it kind of like a telephone cord. Uh, if you pick up your telephone um, too many times and the phone cord gets twisted, it twists on itself. Um, so... Um, Basically, by packaging your DNA into these chromosomes, it makes it easier for your cells to sort um, the DNA when it's time um, to make new cells and to share that DNA with those new cells. Um, it just makes it a little easier to move around instead of having a four-foot strand of DNA. Um, really quick, we're just going to go over the differences between chromosomes and prokaryotic cells than eukaryotic cells. So if you remember, prokaryotes are our bacteria. Um, they're very small organisms. They're very simple and therefore they don't have a lot of DNA. Um, so prokaryote cell, um, cells are simple, so they only usually have one or two molecules of DNA. One thing that's interesting is their DNA is circular, so if you look at it like a bacteria, you can see that the ends of the DNA are connected. This isn't true for um, your DNA, uh, just for bacteria, it's kind of a weird thing. One other thing that's interesting that I like to mention about prokaryotes is they can trade chromosomes from one to another. Um, and this is called lateral gene transfer. And only prokaryotes or bacteria can really do this. Um, but basically, um, two bacteria can kind of get up next to each other, and they can share pieces of DNA. Um, you can see it here. This, this has a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid. And the two bacteria can kind of line up and share DNA. 
And this is actually a big problem right now with um, bacteria in hospitals. If bacteria develop genes to make them uh, resistant to antibiotics, some bacteria can share that with other bacteria. Um, so the kind of uh, traits can spread. So let's look at eukaryotic chromosomes. This is what we spend most of our time focusing on um, in this class and how um, chromosomes are kind of organized in, in eukaryotes because eukaryotes are uh, a lot more complex. They have a lot more DNA. They have a lot more genetic information. There's more parts to those cells. So there's, there's more DNA. Um, and you can see here, these are um, packaged into chromosomes. Prokaryotic uh, cells usually don't have these condensed down structures. So you can see here, this is a chromosome. Um, usually it takes that X shape once it's been duplicated. And eukaryotes tend to have many molecules of DNA separated into multiple pairs of chromosomes. So what you're going to see in a eukaryotic cell is they're going to have a lot more DNA. Depending on the organism, you're going to have um, a different number of chromosomes. Humans, for example, have 46 chromosomes. Uh, monkeys, 42. Dogs have 78. Cats, 38. Um, and, and these just refer to, to how the kind of DNA is organized or segmented into um, different groups in these chromosomes. And one thing that I kind of mentioned is that eukaryotic cells have their chromosomes in pairs. So um, this comes from sexual reproduction. Mom and father um, tend to donate their chromosomes equally. So um, you might have, this is, say, an organism with two chromosomes or two pairs, so four chromosomes total. What they do is they get a, a chromosome from mom and a chromosome from dad, a chromosome from mom and a chromosome for dad. So we call these pairs of chromosomes. So, for example, if you look at a human, um, you get one copy of each chromosome from mom and one copy from dad. So I said a, a human has um, 46 chromosomes but they're in pairs, so they actually have 23 pairs. So what we do is we number these chromosomes, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up until 22 and 23, and um, you can see here they come in pairs. So uh, for chromosome one, we got a copy from mom and a copy from dad. In this chromosome, both copies um, have the DNA for the same information. It might be hair color, eye color, um, or, or your height, um, but you have two copies of them. So same thing with chromosome two. You have one copy from mom, one copy from dad. Chromosome three, one copy from mom, one copy from dad. All the way through all your chromosomes. One copy from mom, one copy from dad. So your chromosomes are always going to be in pairs. One from mom, one from dad. So you, if you have 23 pairs, you have 46 total. Now let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of a cell. We call this the cell cycle. And basically... Uh, uh, every cell in your body, um, at least your somatic cells, uh, go through four stages um, throughout their life. Um, G1, S, G2, and M. And this is going to be a cycle, so it's going to repeat over and over and over again. So uh, every stage here has a name. G1 stands for the gap phase, or I like to call it the growth phase. And this is where cells do most of their growing. The cells get larger, the cells make proteins, the cells make organelles. So the G1 phase is basically where the cell does most of its living. The cell is reading the DNA, it's making proteins, it's getting bigger, it's getting larger. The cell is doing what it needs to do. Now, during this growth phase, the cell is usually constantly getting larger as it makes more proteins, as it takes in more materials. If the cell were to stay in this growth phase forever, it would keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it would burst, it would explode. So that's obviously a bad thing. So sometime during this growth phase, the cell's going to recognize that it's getting too big. It might, um, you know, it's, it's just been growing too much. And it's going to decide that it's going to divide into two smaller cells. So once it makes that decision to stop growing and start dividing into, into two smaller cells, it's going to go into what we call the S phase. The S phase is the first phase in which the cell prepares for this division process. So the S phase stands for synthesis, and in the synthesis phase, um, the cell kind of recognizes, okay, I'm, I'm too large, I need to divide into two smaller cells. The first step it's going to go through is this S phase where it's going to make an extra set of DNA for the new cell. Remember back when I talked about chromosomes, I just said that every cell needs its own set of DNA. Every cell has a copy of its DNA. So uh, before the cell divides, it makes a duplicate copy of its DNA, and that way it has a set for when it makes this new cell, when it divides into two smaller cells. So the S phase is just where the, the DNA is copied. 
um, the DNA gets produced into an extra set. You have an extra set of chromosomes. Once that, that copy of DNA is made, the cell goes into uh, the G2 phase, which is the second phase uh, that it goes through before it divides. And it just stands for the growth phase or gap phase two. And this is where um, the cell uh, kind of pr produces all the things that it's going to need in order to go through this process of division. So the cell will make special organelles, things called centrioles. Um, it makes other things that the, need, the cell needs to divide. It's basically its last chance to prepare before it splits into two cells. It takes away a lot of the organelles that it doesn't need anymore, gets rid of those. And then it goes into the M phase. The M phase uh, stands for the process of mitosis, which is just a fancy word that scientists use for cell division. And this is the actual stage where a single cell will split into two smaller cells. Um, and and What's important to note, we're going to talk a lot a bit about uh, mitosis and how cells divide in the future. But um, basically, through mitosis, um, one cell is going to divide or split into two. And those two cells are identical to each other. Um, we call them sister cells. Um, but basically, because through the S phase, the cell made a copy of its DNA, each cell gets exact copies of that DNA. And then you end up with two cells, one, two that then go through this cycle again and again and again, and then eventually they, they divide over and over again. And this is how your cells live. Um, if you think about this cell that, uh, cycle, though, if it kept going in circles forever, um, you would end up with a million, billion, trillion cells, and you'd get bigger and bigger in every day. Um, cells, an individual cell can only go through this cycle about 60 times. So it, a single cell can only split about 60 times. Uh, once it kind of hits that limit, uh, instead of going to the S phase, the cell just decides that it's not going to repeat the cycle and it's going to die off. Um, and then your body kind of just gets rid of those extra cells. A few cells um, occasionally go through this cycle more than 60 times, usually cells that have some sort of error in their DNA so they can't recognize that they should stop dividing. And these usually become cancer cells, which is generally a bad thing. Um, but for the most part, your, your cells go through this cycle about 60 times of growing and dividing before they die off. Um, one more thing to note, just because you might see it in a textbook, um, you can see actually here's a, a great diagram of the cell cycle here. One cell, DNA gets copied, and you split up that DNA again, and it goes around through this cycle, G1, S, G2, M, G1, S, G2, M, over and over and over again. Um, one thing to note, because you might see it in a textbook, is this G1, S, and G2. These three phases, uh, separate from the mitosis phase, um, they're collectively called interphase. So if you ever see the word interphase, just know that that means G1, S, and G2. It's just the time between cell divisions. So what is my cell doing when it's not splitting in two? Um, are called interphase. And that kind of uh, covers a lot in one lecture. Um, we'll talk a lot more about, about the, the life cycle of a cell and specifically how a cell divides and what this DNA in the cell specifically does. But for the most part, that just kind of describes the life cycle of a cell.